Okay, it's uh, 2020, March the 7th, Saturday. It's um, about 25 to 9 on my watch. And uh, we're looking at uh, the Ocean Rhythm website. The URL address for the Ocean Rhythm website is satides.co.za. And uh, I use this website to uh, determine what the tides are going to look like um, at Glintana before we do the Glintana Wreck and Caves hike on a monthly basis. And um, you can see the, the different um, harbors and beaches along the way um, going down the left hand column all along the um, South African coast. And there are three columns. Um, to the right hand side, I usually use the calendar column on the far right and I scroll down to Mossel Bay because um, that's the closest to Glintona. There's Mossel Bay and then we have a um, left hand column with some dates. Um, you can choose historic dates like 2019 up from way back to May. Um, scrolling down is 2020 and we are on March 7th where is that March 7th is over there and then it shows you a, a sine wave graph of what the tides are going to look like today um, top left hand corner is a summary of the information Mossel Bay Saturday March 7 2020 load tides uh, they give you the level 0 0.48 meters at um, 21 minutes past 8 this morning. They give you sunrise and sunset and moonrise and sun moonset. The sunrise and the, the sun's up and downs and moon's up and downs are indicated by um, blue and yellow arrows at the top and blue and yellow lines running down corresponding to those arrows. An up pointing arrow indicates a rise and a down down pointing arrow indicates a set. Um, the blue is for the moon and the yellow is for the sun. Um, there's a time axis horizontally running at the bottom and it starts at zero zero hours midnight and then two o'clock and four o'clock and between them there's a vertical bar indicating um, five o'clock and so forth. We are now going on to nine o'clock, it's half past eight, going on to nine, so we're about here and that's about low tide on the white sine wave graph. Um, going up to high tide over there at uh, about halfway between two and three and as indicated by the summary about half past two this afternoon there will be a high tide um, there are some level indicators in meters on the right hand side um, starting at zero zero meters and then um, all the way up to 2.44 that's the absolute maximum apparently that's the maximum for the year if I'm not mistaken. There are um, abbreviations on the left hand side indicating what each of the level levels mean. Um, Hatoi, H-A-T-O-Y, I think that's high annual tide over the year and there's a lot toy at the bottom low annual tide over the year um, and there's a mean level right in the middle running across and you can see some yellow dots following a sign pattern at the top and blue dots mixed in between them. I believe the blue dots indicate which dates have already been um, recorded, which dates have already passed. And the yellow dots indicate which dates are still coming and um, being only in March we see a whole lot of more yellow dots than we see blue dots. Um, so the top sine wave for the dots indicates the, the high tides and the lower sine wave for the dots indicates where all the low tides will be. Um, it gives you an idea of what the tide today is doing relative to what we expect the tide to do for the entire year. Um, today I would like to try to go get some video at Clintona um, at high tide just for comparison because I, I record quite a few videos um, when we do the hike during spring low tide. Um, 
So I thought perhaps for comparison it'll be a good idea to, to get some high tide footage as well. I'm not sure exactly what the conditions will be like. It's always a new experience when you do Quintana hike. The sand shift, the tides are different. But usually um, when I do uh, preparation planning for the Quintana um, Wrecking Caves hike, um, I plan the hike to run from the mean high um, NEEP level. I don't know what the W is there for, um, MHWN. Um, I usually make sure that the, that the hike is scheduled to run between um, that MHWN over there and it goes down to low tide and then back up to the MHWN level. Um, mean high NEEP level. Um, that usually gives us about seven hours to to complete the hike, which is more than sufficient. Um, I've never had any trouble at those levels of water. Um, I have been there in the past once or twice where before I started checking the tides, where high tide caught us out and we got stuck in certain places. Um, so today I expect we might be stuck somewhere and we'll just wait it out and see how it goes. It is not exactly a spring tide today. Um, our sunset and moonset do not really coincide or our sunset and moon rise do not really coincide. So it's more sort of a, a neat tightish kind of uh, setup that we have. Um, for um, for a spring tide, you need a full moon or a, a new moon, and I'm going to try to find that quickly. Um, let's try March 28. Um, let's see, you see this the sunrise and the moonrise do not coincide exactly. Let's go back a little bit, and back a little bit more and back a little bit more and you can see the sunrise and moonrise coming together and they're on the 24th they should be almost on top of each other 23rd the moonrise now precedes the sunrise um, so when moonrise and sunrise um, exactly coincide that is a, a new moon situation um, and two weeks before that or after that you will have a full moon situation. Let's see some neap tide. Uh, a week before that would be the 17th. That's what the neap tide looks like. And you can see the the high and the low are very close to each other. It's a very level kind of situation. Um, you've got high lows, you've got low highs, and that can be uncomfortable. Um, so I choose to go during a, during spring tide rather when I know that the low tide is really low and we'll have the best opportunity to um, walk on the sand and not have to clamber and climb and crawl over the rocks the whole time. Um, just for comparison, let's run from the 17th, it was a neap tide the Tuesday neap tide and you can see the um, sunrise and the moonset and the sunset they're fairly far apart see, you see that's just before the 17th and the tides are a little bit um, higher and lower but there's the 17th of March and then 18th of March and 19th of March and the tides are starting to deviate from each other again, the, high and the, the highs and the lows, 21, 22, 23, and there's your 24, that should be about the highest, and then 25, 26, you can see the tides coming down again, 27th, uh, the high tides coming down, the low tides rising up. This is the other half of my uh, planning and preparation and record keeping for the Glintana Wrecking Caves hike. Um, I've set up a spreadsheet 
with um, dates and times and records of the moon and um, eventually um, after we've done the, the hike I include a brief note of what the conditions were like um, left hand we've got the dates um, this these are historic dates uh, 2018 October the 6th was my first recording um, I tried to record the sunrise um, and then when we start the hike and what time the low, low tide will be and what the level will be um, and then what time we should end the hike to be safely ahead of high, high tide again and high tide time and high tide level and then what the moon was doing then um, as you can see initially up to 2019 March um, my record keeping wasn't all that complete but um, then eventually I started including all the other data as well um, that level over there is the average um, for the spring low tide um, only for all the records that I've kept so it's about 40 centimeters above whatever the zero standard is supposed to be and then that is the corresponding high tide spring high tide level almost two meters average sometimes it's more and there's a 2.03 that was on May the 18th um, at about 25 to 4 in the afternoon um, the corresponding low tide was 0 0.23 so you can see that's considerably lower than the 0 0.40 average um, then our next hike let's see where are we our next hike is planned for the next Lintana hike is planned for March 28th um, sunrise will be uh, about 20 to 7 um, we should start about 8 o'clock according to the the neap high tide the neap high levels as I've indicated previously um, low tide will be on the 28th of March it will be about quarter to 12 at a level of 0 0.41 so it's a close to the average yeah, should be a good hike I think um, we should be back um, before four o'clock usually we're long long before that we're back already again the high tide is about 10 to 6 so you see there's a quite a broad margin I try to play it safe um, and the high tide level then will be 1.85 meters above the zero standard um, it should be a new moon level um, just for completeness I looked at the first quarter the full moon the third quarter and the new moon um, levels and times and um, on the 14th the low tide is 0 0.5 I tried to choose the lower of the two spring low tides um, so that's why I chose March 28th for the next one um, and then um, predicting ahead um, April that's Easter weekend the 10th 11th 12th 13th I looked at the levels and what's going to happen there and that looks like a good weekend to go as well that should be around about a full moon um, and yes this is what I this is what I use to keep track and to plan ahead of what the tides are doing at Clintana. Um, here we have some conditions on the further right, some notes about what happened there. The sand was washed away. That was, let's just get the date again, I think it was October, October the 6th, 2018. The sand had been washed away and we were doing a whole lot of rock scrambling, I suppose. Um, then after that, uh, October 27th, there was more sand present. Um, and then postponed due to rain and due to wind and postponed due to rain and here on the let's see what was that that's December the 14th we could walk all around the wreck at low tide so that was a particularly low tide I think let's see what the level was the low level uh, it was uh, it was indicated statistically on SA tides as 0 0.44 which is actually higher than the average so I suppose we had some high level sand around the wreck which allowed us to walk around there um, 
Yeah, the wreck was wide open at low tide. Um, and that was on January the 11th with a, with a level of 0 0.39 meters above zero standard. Um, this hike over here, jacuzzi filled with sand. That was an interesting one. That was the last one we did, February 22nd. We had a lot of sand. It was many places we had high sand levels. Um, I could crawl into the little space we I call the jacuzzi underneath the crawl space um, into that cave. And usually where there's water, um, we were walking on sand. It was pretty amazing. It was a completely different experience to what we used to. So yes, there's March 7th, that's today. Um, if we had to do a hike, um, we would probably end at about 12 o'clock, but I'm going to go down to Gintana at 12 o'clock and have a look at what the high tide is doing towards half past two. And then um, I should be back later this afternoon again. Okay, I think that's about it. I hope I've got all the information that you have an idea of how I use satides.co.za to do my planning and preparation for the um, Glintana Wrecking Caves hike on a monthly basis at spring low tide. Okay, it's about going on to quarter past twelve on my watch. Here we are at Glintana. And uh, the water level is about as high as it usually is when we start hiking on a spring low tide. Only now it's going on to high tide. So the water level will only increase until about half past two when it'll be high tide. And uh, then it'll start decreasing again. So I expect. I've, I've, Let's say not expect, but I won't be surprised if I get stuck somewhere along the line and have to wait for the tide to to recede again before I can pass. So we'll see how it goes. Um, the idea is not to crawl all the caves today, although I've brought my flashlight just for interest sake, but well, just in case. Um, but my idea is to to do the hike and to complete it and to take a look at what the tide looks like along all the difficult spots along the route. About halfway along on the main beach and first thing I notice is that at high tide the sand close to the water is significantly softer than uh, at low tide. It makes going a little bit tougher to work harder. About 20 past 12, there's Bay Rock. And yes, water level over here is pretty much what it usually is. going to start at our usual spot there with that vertical pole is planted just down from there straight down from there on the beach here we go uh, I've taken about three minutes to put my shoes back on and uh, just for a record some junk lying around as there often is right here at the start that is a piece of cloth cooking bottle. Lots of plastic, it's just plastic. Cartons, boxes. Some more plastic with bottles and clothes. And
it's fairly filthy here today. This is probably as bad as I've as I've ever seen it. to Africa it says on that white box over there so it seems it's definitely the fishermen who leave their junk lying around here um, it's their place but they don't take care of it which is rather disappointing Uh, 25 past 12 and from here uh, the route still doesn't look too much different there's still the possibility of going around at the bottom around the front and then to the back or over the top um, I think I'll I'll go over the top as usual some more junk uh, it's going on to half past 12 and surprise surprise we have a whole lot of sand here today so it'll be easy walking around at least at this time i don't know what high tide is going to look like down at the bottom having come down that little incline over there a little rise um just waiting for the traffic to pass there's the first cave in the shade Cassette the crowns with the white patch on top and let's run this is a different view look at all this sand wow that's a lot of sand haven't seen that can't remember ever having seen this before also lots of sand usually the water washes up right up to these rocks these rocks are about man high right here at the point and you have to wait for the waves and then scoot along quickly but it's got so much sand here today it's almost unrecognizable here on Happy Beach. Just past half past 12 at the end of Happy Beach. And when the tide is high, usually I have to scoot across the top here. But we haven't done that in a while. We usually go through the gap over here. I'll go over the top. The no, water is not particularly high yet. Just over the rocks from Happy Beach. This is the second plastic cooling bottle that I found among the rocks. I thought at the first one, yeah, it's just one, don't worry about it. But that's the second one now. So I'm just recording it for reference. Twenty-five to one, and just beyond the plastic bottle, I've come across a female gull um, having a meal on a dead fish she's looking at me I'm looking at her we're sort of walking around sizing each other up 
who's gonna get the food. There we go. Picking at the eyes. Well, I've seen better lunches, I can tell you that. Seems to be intimidated. Might have been the wind direction because the wind is blowing into my face now. Away from her. Towards me. So when I was on the other side, she might not have liked all the all the sunblock I'm wearing. Twenty to one. And this is Hoekop and we have a whole lot of water around Hoekop at the moment usually it doesn't look like this I suspect much of the sand has been washed out from this point so that the water can rise higher usually we walk on the sand where the water is there in front now but today it looks like I'll have to walk around the back or over the rocks now there's some oyster catches at the top Uh, looks like Wurkop is an island at the moment. Water all around and it doesn't seem to be receding. Going on to quarter to one, there's Wurkop. Just beyond Wurkop I've discovered some rock pools and uh, it's hot enough for me to consider getting in. Especially because there are some fish in there. I'm going to see what the other pools look like. I don't see any fish there. That one's rather murky. Not too keen to get in that one. There's a little fish down there. Some fish in here as well, but I don't like the look of the water. It's dirty. I'll try that pond over there. Fish from the top. Let's see if we can. <laughs> Probably running away. There they are. Okay, let's see if I can chase them. Water's feeling quite nice. Yeah, it's about thigh deep in here. And uh, let's get some underwater footage. Feel them crawling and nibbling. Ow! <laughs> they bite. Be careful and be warned.
Crawl are attacking me. I'm getting out. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a unique experience. Thank you very much. Going on to Central One. That's where the crawl attacked me when I tried to get some footage of the fish. And here we are on top of a rock. I saw a plastic bag over here. And I came to investigate at least somebody that made the trouble to put their junk inside the plastic bag. But then they left the bag here. There's a bait box. And I saw another bait box stuck in the between the rocks and a crevice over here. Over there, new box in the shade. And that looks like some tackle packaging lying on the rocks there. There's another plastic bag, a green bag, and the, and the furrow running down. Nature wasn't created this way. Why do we do this? Looks like a heron of some kind. Here we are at the beach house. It's locked up. Looks like the holiday makers have gone home. And there's the wreck. Yeah, it's about five to one. And yes, there's water all around the wreck. So the tide is coming in. Looks like the sand has washed out a bit as well. There's a nice crash. Yeah, that's probably something you're not going to see on low tide. When the waves roll in, they crash against the wreck. And here we are at the Eye of the Needle. Let's see if it's traversable today. Looks like. No water there. Yes, it's all dry sand. Very good. Sand level is fairly high here. We're approaching the crawl space. Just wait for the traffic and go. Yeah, I'm going to put my shoes on. Hey, wait, hang on. Usually, this patch of sand is a rock pool, and you have to walk along here and then step over here not to step into the water. What happened? Where'd all the sand come from? Who brought the shovels and the buckets? Good grief. What a change, what a difference. Anyway. Here we are at the crawl space. And last time we were here, 22nd February, this was all sand. Now it looks like the sand is being washed out. There's still some high sand underneath the water, but it looks like it's being washed out slowly but surely. And 
I don't think the jacuzzi underneath there will be acceptable accessible today. Not easily accessible, you will get wet. To some extent at least. Just looking back the way I've come. On the way forward. Well, at five past one, there's the first view of Cave Bay. Um, looks like the sand is fairly high, so the water is not as high at the moment. Perhaps I'll wait until high tide and see what, what happens then, because I'd really like to see high tide. And that's about another hour and a half to go. So I'll just hang around and enjoy the views. 10 past 1. This is just around the back of Tootle Rock. And uh, here's a black label bottle, a black label beer bottle, and plastic container. The plastic container might have been washed up, but the beer bottle hasn't. The label is still clear, the edges are sharp. It's not been washed over the rocks. Somebody dropped it here. Somebody brought it in and they dropped it here and they didn't bother to pick it up and take it out back with them. Just around the corner from Turtle Rock, here's another beer bottle. And you can see it doesn't have a label on it anymore. It's been washed around and the label has been washed off completely. So I can think that some Chinese fisherman on a fishing boat somewhere has dropped it overboard and it's washed up here. But the other one was brought in by a South African fisherman probably. It's the first big cave. I'm not going to do any crawling, I'm just walking through. Some more junk having washed up. This is probably not South Africans' fault. But still, it can use a cleaner. Okay, it's quarter past one. I'm on Cave Beach at Cave Bay. Quite a few gulls and oyster catchers waiting on the beach. Coming up with the rocks now, I had my first proper fall ever. Uh, my right foot slipped out from under me and I remember two thoughts going through my head as I was going down. First it was, wait I can compensate. And as I was compensating, I realized it's not going to work. And then my second thought immediately was, don't pass out now. Thankfully, I didn't pass out. Um, I banged my right knee, that's probably the one that hurts the most at the moment, but it's not a big deal. Um, and then I fell on my right shoulder, my left shoulder, and I suppose I banged my left jaw on the rocks as well, it's no big deal. That's the least of my worries. Um, the right knee is, is the one that hurts the most, but it bends and it works properly. Um, I think I'll just park here in the shade and wait for high tide. 20 past 1, um, I've dropped my bag and so on and I think adrenaline is a wonderful thing. I didn't feel anything after the fall um, and then I thought perhaps I should inspect the damage and the first thing I noticed was uh, there's a slight scrape on my right wrist and uh, then I looked down at my knee, yeah it's a bit banged, there's a Looks like a blood blister. Uh, what else? Ah, here's a scrape on the inside of my left arm. And my left shoulder is also a bit worse for wear. Let's hope you can get all of that. Okay. No major damage. Um, it doesn't hurt a lot. Um, I'm walking around perfectly comfortably. Okay, it's about 25 past 2 on my watch and just before high tide 
I can see the water rolling in visibly from one set of waves to the next set of waves um, the water level rising steadily I was thinking oh, it's not going to be all that impressive a high tide but at uh, half past three in five minutes time we might have water where I'm standing now um, there's a piece of driftwood that's come up with the tide and this is breakfast rock just by the way I'm going to the kitchen cave quickly just to show you that the water has washed up here there's a line where the water's wash, washed at high tide so the water does wash up quite high not exactly sure how high it's going to be today but let's give it another five minutes and see how it goes because uh, SA Tides said at half past two this afternoon and there should be the highest tide. We'll see how it goes. Okay, it's about half past on my watch. Tide is not much higher, um, but I was picking up some junk. There's a plastic bag here and then when I picked up the plastic bag I noticed I've disturbed uh, an ant nest of some kind and I have never seen ants on the beach running around like this before beach ants sand ants what? imagine that I mean they're right on the beach this is where the tide is going to wash what are they doing building a nest here? Like, don't they know the danger? Crazy animals. And they're just everywhere. I know just now. They're just scurrying all over the place. There's one on my shoe. Come on, get off. Okay, well, I guess that's about as high as the tide's going to go. Um, I'm going to start heading back, picking up some junk along the way. And getting some more footage of any interesting tidal phenomena. Oh, yes, before I forget, um, I discovered a, a scrape on my left elbow. And I've noticed there's a, a hole in the shoulder of my shirt. From the fall but my knee is back to normal pretty much um, I guess the thing that hurts the most now is my left shoulder and doesn't hurt all that much either uh, it's just a little bit of a, a report back on developments and progress and so on okay the water is up to a level where I need to start negotiating routes uh, this looks like a good way to go. Uh, that's the main beach. This is at the end of the main beach. And uh, I need to find my way across these rocks now. I suppose with the level of sand at the moment it's possible to drop down here and scoot through there otherwise you could go over the top let's try this without slipping and jump there we go Okay, here's some more junk.
the junk turned out to be a plastic bag without any holes in it so I might be able to pick up some more junk see the water's washed up to these rocks um, if it gets very much higher not very much higher, not very much higher then you'll have to climb over these rocks or you find a, a way up there on that side behind the bend and then crawl over here but I mean this is like what 50 centimeters higher than what it is at the moment not even and then you'll be and you'll be stuck here because I don't know if any way across the top and back down on the other side There's a big piece of sponge and there's a slip slop. Quarter to three and there's the useless bridge. Can't see it in the shot at the moment but it's just there behind that rock. And this gully has got a lot more water than it usually does when we pass here at spring low tide. Oh yeah, love it. Okay, time to move on. Going on to ten to three, and just come up on this little rise around the corner. There's the wreck in the distance, and it's pretty much completely surrounded by water. The two parts closest to me, the two parts of the wreck closest to me. It's almost completely submerged. I can see the second part sticking out every now and then, like that. And then a wave crash crashes over, but the third part is pretty much completely submerged now. 10 to 3. I'm at the crawl space. And looking down from the top. Looks like I'm going to have to run to miss the water on the other side when I get there. There's a goal. Usually this little pool down here below going into the jacuzzi is very calm and flat and um, you can take a, a dip in there, you can take a swim but not today Okay, here we are on the other side of crawl space. And 
getting some footage of what the water is doing. Trying to determine whether I should go over or around the front. Around the front is probably better. I mean, over the rocks is probably better. Wait for the traffic to subside a bit. And go. Go. Just realized here at the eye of the needle it's actually not a bridge it's more like a gap or is it a bridge I thought it was a, a gap with a big rock wedged at the top but apparently no it's it's connected at the back here Right here in front, there's a gap between the rocks. Let's see if I'm getting that properly. Yep, there we go. Water's been here already. Second bit, third bit just peeking out from under the waves. Half past three, and I'm coming up on a a white heron on the left, and a black oyster catch catcher on the right, and looking in opposite directions. So let's see what happens as I approach. There they go. Okay. Okay, it's about quarter past three and I'm not exactly sure what's waiting for me up ahead. It looks like I might have to scramble over the top. Because there's quite a bit of water in this gully up ahead here. We'll see how it goes. So quarter past three, I'm just surveying the water. I could run across here when it's open and then get on top of the rocks on the other side. I could do that. I think I'm going to go for it. 
just wait for the water to subside. And even if it does, if, even if it catches me, it won't be that big of a train smash. And go. Yeah, here we go. Working well. And we're on the other side. Excellent. It's just a matter of taking the high line over the rocks here. Right, uh, 20 past 3 and I think I'm going to stop picking up rubbish now because I've got as much as what one man can carry. Two bags full. And I'm not at the worst of it yet. So I hope somebody else does it. Right, let's see which way forward. How's the water here on the low side? Uh, I might have to scoot over the top here. That. Step carefully. If all else fails, always remember at least, maintain at least one point of contact with the surface. Otherwise it means you're falling, I guess. Here's another piece of junk, which I haven't got the space to pick up. And there's another one. It's mainly plastic bottles today, it looks like. Cool drinking water bottles. Going on to 25 past 3. And coming up to the gully at the first cave. And then he's beside the ground. See what's happening here. That's a nice little pool over there. And it looks to be navigable. It looks to be navigable. Looks like the route around the front is not really accessible today. So I'm going over the top here. Going on to half past three. And just to confirm the mess that's been left behind. There's some old brown sherry. And plastic water and cool drink bottles. All over the place. There's another one. And the bait box definitely remains of the day after the fishermen have been here. Another plastic bottle. Everybody 
each and every single individual would only merely just simply take out the junk that they bring back in dot 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 fill in the blanks Right, and here we are back on the main beach. That was a couple of hundred meters going back home.